Hi everyone, welcome. I'm out here in my yard and what you see here in this laundry basket is a whole bunch of weeds. They've been sitting out for a couple days to let them dry a bit and let the dirt attach to their roots dry so that it flakes off hopefully. And the destination for that stuff is my compost barrel and it's a lot of stuff. So, you know, it's going to raise the level in here, but I do want to save some of it because not only do I want to use it here in my compost barrel, but I'd also like to include it in the next feeding of our outdoor worm bag version 4.0. Right over here in these, uh, it's two grow bags actually, right in these two grow bags, nested one within the other. And uh, besides, besides giving them a whole bunch of that crab grass as bedding, I've also got some watermelon to give them. So why don't we get this uh, show on the road? I'm gonna throw on a glove and get the camera down close, down within the worm bag. And I'm only gonna video what's going on over here. I'm not gonna bother with what's going on in the compost barrel. When we're done, whatever's left will just get dumped in there. So it's really all about feeding our outdoor worm bag version 4.0. So let's get to work. Yep, right there on the top of the worm's favorite foods is watermelon. So I think they're gonna appreciate this, but they're equally gonna appreciate all that fresh bedding going in, all that crabgrass. The crabgrass, you know, different from a lot of the bedding I use, such as my dry leaves that stuff still got a good bit of moisture level in it I think and I even came in here something I don't normally do is I came in here last night with the hose I was watering some of my plants in my garden and it seemed like hey what the heck let's give these guys a little shot of water so I ran the hose down into here for a couple seconds just to dampen things I didn't even really anticipate that I'd be coming in here today to feed but I just check my tracking spreadsheet. 18 days have already passed since the last check-in of this system. They got they got typical kitchen scraps, a number of different veggies and whatever was on hand at the time. I'm just pushing some of this bedding aside so we can kind of get towards the middle of the bin, which is where we usually drop in the food that we're giving them. And after 18 days, you know, one of my things is to often go looking for leftovers of the past feeding but I don't think we're going to see a whole lot I mean there's a good bit of worms hanging out in the material where the last feeding was applied oh and I was just reminded of something as I reached in I heard a little crunch and I guess that's what's left of our hard-boiled egg some people had questioned whether it was still material from inside the egg left I could see little bits of the yolk I don't know if the yolk is the part they like better or the egg whites or maybe they get to the egg whites first because that's accessible first and the yolk on the inside is last because of its orientation to the rest of the material nice number of worms hanging out down here and i don't know why i thought that this system had greater amount of depth it just feels like i probed down and before i knew it i was already scraping bottom over here so many little itsy bitsy worms in here I mean, yeah here and there you see a, a pretty good size seemingly adult sized worm but so many small ones too I'm guessing they're babies so I think by having all this crabgrass it's gonna help increase the volume of this system considerably it's also not only bedding it's certainly food for them too as it breaks down so it's going to be generous and it's going to give us a good amount of time till the next time we need to come in here to feed them again. So I'm right at the bottom already. So I think it's time to start bringing in some of this crabgrass, a really big handful <laughs> of it over here, going right down the middle. And I guess my only concern about this stuff is that I don't know if it's already had a chance to or if it still has the potential to heat up a lot, you know, kind of start into the hot composting process kind of makes me worry about whether or not the worms have sufficient space to retreat from it if it does happen I think we're safe here you know I don't think we have anything to worry about I think you know combining some of this existing older bedding like material it's been floating out here on the surface in will probably also help sweeten the deal so they don't feel like they're just climbing into a whole bunch of you know fresh sterile material they can like kind of hop from dry leaf and dry maple key is that what they call these things <laughs> they can kind of hop 
between little portions of partially composted materials as they try to make their way into this newly added material. So down here in the middle, amidst all this bedding type stuff, bedding which will ultimately end up being their food too, in can go all of this yummy melon. And you know what else? I got a little care package here. I bought this from downstairs. I, I do this occasionally. In the past, I never bothered, but more recently, since I've got a pretty good quantity of crushed eggshell, I'll grab a little portion of it for them as a little care package to include with most feedings. Sprinkle it down into the food that they're getting. And it's really serving as a grit item, not so much as a food item. So they'll, they'll swallow this stuff and it'll end up down in their gizzards, which is the equivalent of their stomachs, in terms of like what you and I use to digest the foods we eat. We use our stomachs, they use their gizzards, but since the gizzards don't use acid, they use more of a mechanical muscular force to grind up the foods that they're eating. They need a coarse, minute substance like this to help with the digestion process. So that'll be the end of today's biology lesson. That's about all I know anyway. <laughs> But, you know, what we can do to help that process along is to give them grit. It could be sand, it could be crushed crustacean shells, rock dust. Different people use different stuff as grit in their worm bins, whatever's handy for you. And some people don't even use any. I've seen multiple tests. London Worm and Garden did a whole year of doing no grit in one of his systems. I saw Plant Obsessed do it more recently no grit allowed type system tests and worms do just fine. I mean, it is true that if you're taking worms from some other place where they did have access to grit, I believe they have a storage mechanism down within their digestive system that kind of tucks away a little bit of grit when it's available for use on a rainy day when none is around. So I don't know if, you know, worms get by just based on that, but you would think any newborns needing grit must somehow get by if there's none around. So all I'm doing now is just grabbing a couple more handfuls of this stuff to sort of spread across the top here. I actually thought I might go a little bit more generous because as you saw, we got right to the bottom of this material when I probed down into it. And I really would like to bring the level of this whole thing up. And I've got so much of this stuff here. I think it'll be kind of nice, you know? We'll drop it in, we'll keep going. We're not gonna go skimpy we're just gonna keep going I'm not gonna moisten it because I'm pretty sure that maybe some of this stuff that was out on the surface is dried up but some of the stuff that was right below it is not looking very dry yet and it was only you know pulled out of the ground a couple days ago so some of the stuff sitting in the middle of this pile is still quite fresh and still probably hanging on to the majority of its moisture content so before I come back in here with any more water, like I said, I did add water yesterday and we're outside so the rain can rain into here, except with that wooden cover, I would think the you know rain only makes its way to the outer, outer edges. So maybe it doesn't really benefit that much from rain when it's out here. So sometimes I worry that maybe I should leave it uncovered, at least for periods of time during the rainy days to let a little bit of natural rain get in here instead of me needing to come over with the garden hose to supplement moisture. Like I said, it's not a regular habit of mine to come in here with the garden hose, but it just seemed like a, a good idea with the warm weather I've been having lately. So I'm just, I don't know if I'm going overboard here. I don't think I am. I think this stuff is gonna break down once the worms move into it, start nibbling on it. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna drop considerably. So I think this is kind of a nice setup here, what we've got. We've given them grit along with their feeding, a good, good amount of bedding this time, as well as some scrumptious watermelon. They're gonna love that. So 18 days, I don't know if we wanna wait another 18 days till the next check-in. I got a feeling that watermelon is gonna be gone in a couple of days. And then, like I said, they're gonna press on and start continuing on with um, all of these leaves are gonna turn into food, not just bedding for them. So there's a good amount of food in here. There's certainly no reason to be concerned. I could probably go away and, you know, not touch this system for a month. 
If we were to do that and come back in here, I'd be curious to see how much of this would remain as far as being, you know, still in a grass type form in its original form, or would it have all been broken down by then? Usually I don't have the, uh, <laughs> I don't have the tolerance or patience to wait a whole month. I'm usually very curious to see what's going on in my system. So usually uh, an 18 day pause between check-ins like this is a little bit more than to be expected. We'll probably be back in here sooner, but who knows? We'll see. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.